Good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, it's a real pleasure to welcome you here to Cheney Manor this morning. Uh, as you can see, the cat uh, has joined me again. It's obvious that the weather is not quite so good as it has been over previous days. It, in actual fact, she doesn't know whether to go in or go out. So it's, it's one of those days, really. Uh, you can also see that um, I'm wearing my blue shirt today, not my black shirt. So we're, we're, we're not kind of similarly attired as we were the other day. Uh, she refuses to let me uh, uh, air pair spray paint her or anything like that. So, um, and she's out trying to cause disruption. Oi, you. Oh, sacrilegious cat. Come on, give me. Right. She's still here. Uh, hopefully you have the uh, liturgy in front of you for today, the 30th of June, the last day of June. Uh, it's hard to know where time has gone. Apparently it's 100 days since the, uh, we've had 100 days of, of lockdown. And uh, unfortunately some our brothers and sisters in some parts of the country, um, that will continue. And uh, it will continue for us in, 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 in many ways. Guidance came out from the government yesterday, uh, yesterday in the early hours of the morning, uh, and I believe the Church of England are kind of ploughing through at the moment. Um, so please continue to watch this space with regards to um, the church opening for worship on Sunday. Uh, it looks promising, but um, we need to go through things just to make sure everything is safe, um, because uh, we, we need to do this in the right way. And um, but things things are on the move. So let's just have a moment of quiet as we recognise that we are in Almighty God's presence. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion, who satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his. In all places of his dominion, bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. I'm going to use Psalm 73 today, Psalm 73. In the Lord God have I made my refuge. Truly, God is loving to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. Nevertheless, my feet were almost gone, my steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious of the proud, I saw the wicked in such prosperity. For they suffer no pains, and their bodies are sleek and sound. They come to no misfortune like other folk, nor are they plagued as others are. Therefore pride is their necklace, and violence wraps them like a cloak. Their iniquity comes from within, the conceits of their hearts overflow. 
They scoff and speak only of evil. They talk of oppression from on high. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue right ranges round the earth. And so people turn to them and find in them no fault. They say, how should God know? Is there knowledge in the most high? Behold, these are the wicked. Ever at ease, they increase their wealth. Is it in vain that I cleanse my heart and wash my hands in innocence? All day long have I been stricken and chastened every morning. If I had said, I will speak as they do, I should have betrayed the generation of your children. Then thought I to understand this, but it's too hard for me, until I entered the sanctuary of God and understood the end of the wicked. How you set them in slippery places, you cast them down to destruction. How suddenly do they come to destruction, perish and come to a fearful end? As with a dream when one awakes, so, Lord, when you arise, you will despise their image. When my heart became embittered and I was pierced to the quick, I was but foolish and ignorant. I was like a brute beast in your presence. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing upon the earth that I desire in comparison with you. Through my flesh, and my, though my flesh and my heart fail me, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Truly, those who forsake you will perish. You will put to silence the faithless who betray you. But it is good for me to draw near to God. In the Lord God have I made my refuge, that I may tell of all your works. In the Lord God have I made my refuge. Holy God, may we find wisdom in your presence and set our hope not on uncertain riches, but on the love that holds us to the end. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. We have this song of peace to use as our can a canticle today. Spirit of God, teach us your ways that we may walk in the paths of peace. Come, let us go up to the mountain of God, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For the law shall go out from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God shall judge between the nations and shall meditate for many, mediate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation neither shall they learn war any more. O people of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Spirit of God, teach us your ways, that we may walk in the paths of peace. We have this uh, reading from Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 15, beginning to read at verse 11. Luke chapter 15, verse 11. Then Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and travelled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property to, to, in dis, dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out of one of the citizens, hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to the, his fields to feed the pigs. He would have gladly filled himself with the good, the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. 
I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then his son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said of his slaves, Quickly bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatter calf and kill it, and let us celebrate and eat. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come, has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he, he answered his father, listen, for all the, these years I've been working like a slave for you. And I have never disobeyed your command, yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back and who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf with it for him. Then the father said to him, son, you are always with me and that all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So the, um, well, I think sometimes, uh, it's, it's sometimes called the, the prodigal son, isn't it? The parable of the prodigal son. And um, it kind of talks about the son coming to his senses, a bit like we heard in that, um, to some extent, similar to what we heard in the psalm uh, the, the son comes to his senses and goes back to the father but actually I, I i i see it in a very different light really this is all about the grace of the father uh, the forgiving father who would accept his son back unconditionally it wasn't a case of well you've learned your lesson um you've learned your lesson let's get back to work it's it's gracious it's 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 done with uh, it's done with love, and that's I think what we can one of the things that we can learn from that. Yes, we we do need to recognise where we have gone wrong and come to our senses and turn to God. But actually, it's a lot more about being gracious, being gracious to those, um, to being to being gracious and accepting to to. Uh, those who who turn to God, um, and you know, it, and being accepting to those who who might come in and perhaps even come into our church and do different things and ask questions and make do things which we're not used to. Um, but it's about coming coming back to God who forgives, uh, who accepts us, and is great gracious enough to forgive us for all that we have done. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the paths of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of, his of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, 
free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Now going to um, pray, and we're going to use the prayers that um, have been written uh, especially for the for this outbreak, this outbreak which continues to uh, blight people and continues to take people's lives prematurely um, and continues to add suffering to uh, many in our world, directly or indirectly. So. Please, uh, just for a moment, let's have a moment of quiet when we bring before God those whom on our, our those whom on our, on, oh, excuse me, those to whom are on our hearts at this time. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. In this time of uncertainty and distress, sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us to love our neighbour and to care for those in need, as if we were caring for you. In this time of anxiety and suffering, give us strength to comfort the fearful, to tend the sick and to assure the isolated of our love and your love. For your name's sake. Amen. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, we entrust into your care all those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe. In a moment of quiet, please lift before God those who are on your hearts. all those on our hearts, comfort and heal them and restore them to health and strength through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, give skill, sympathy, protection and resilience to all who are caring for the sick wherever they may be and your wisdom to those searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit, that through their work many will be restored to health 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Loving God, we lift before you all those whom we rely on for our daily needs, those whom we see and those who do their work unseen. We give you thanks for the way that they serve. We give you thanks, Lord, for their hard work and dedication. And we pray, dear Father, that they will be protected, that they, are, they will have good health and well-being that they will know of your love and of your protection. Help us always to be grateful. Help us always to have um, gratitude in our hearts, in all we say and do. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, our, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Oh God, help us to trust you. Help us to know that you are with us and help us to believe that nothing can separate us from your love revealed in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbour's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God, giving and loving wherever we are, whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, wherever you call us. Collect for today. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all your creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us, and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for um, joining me today. Um, it is a great pleasure to do this and uh, regardless of whether we open on Sunday or, or not, um, my hope is that we do, um, this will, morning prayer will continue um, we'll, we'll continue at nine o'clock um, and we will, yes, we'll continue to gather, gather together. So have a great day. Uh, I hope you stay dry. Uh, I have got a, uh, a basket of washing, which I've been instructed to put out. I was putting it out earlier and it started to rain. So I don't, I, I, I don't know, I don't know what to do. I think I'm going to, I'm going to put it out. I'm going to have some faith. Uh, and do what I'm told. Um, I hope you have a great day and um, I look forward to uh, being together, all things being well, uh, in July, tomorrow. So uh, have a great day and God bless. So may God bless us. So may God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Help us to be a blessing to each other and our communities, that your ways may be known among us. Let all the people praise you, O oh God. Let all the people praise you. Amen, 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 amen. Have a great day. See you soon.